I love a biopic where the singer sings. Okay, you know, good. There are options, yes. the ones out there where it's a lip syncing game. Yeah. But, uh, what do you think that uh, we bring to this film, to Marisa's performance, by actually having her voice uh, playing? I mean, it's everything in the sense. I didn't. When I cast Marisa, she declared she couldn't sing. So to be where we're at is kind of crazy and wild, but also a testament to the music team working with her and, and her for putting in the time. But it's important because emotionally we tell the story through her songs. So it would have been very different if we'd have used like studio recordings, but you know, Marisa's able to sort of feel sadness or laugh within a performance or you know, shift and change, which she wouldn't have been able to do had we have used just uh, Amy's recordings, which obviously are incredible. But Marisa can emotionally excel within the story this way. Um, obviously, the script comes to you, and you kind of we're all aware of Amy's life. Was there moments uh, within her life which you show on screen? You're just so looking forward to kind of shooting and put your own interpretive spin on it as a director. I mean, Matt Greenhouse and I worked on the script together, and and he wrote something so beautiful. So I knew what I was in for because we planned it that way. But Glastonbury was an epic experience, and when people see it. I kind of like the fact that I want them to know we shot that in a small studio. So when you see Glastonbury and it feels epic and you're in a field and you're in a festival and the sound is amazing, that's creative filmmaking at its best because it's so fun to pull something like that off, I guess.